run up the flagpole with hacksaws. Yeah, get on with it. Slice the flipping thing in two and let's get on. The truth of the matter is, they're not my ladders. Whose ladders are they? They're the wife's. <laughs> now, that's my sort of wife, is that, with her own ladders. <laughs> She'll understand much of her if she's a woman. That's the problem. She's not a woman. <laughs> Honestly. What is she, one of these bank managers in a pinafore dress? <laughs> you can't pick up the Daily Mail without there's a Mr. Somebody popping on a pair of court shoes and calling himself Deirdre. <laughs> I blame you for this. You should vet our decorators. We shouldn't have our canteen painted by the upholder of a sham marriage. <laughs> Where did you do it? Honolulu! <laughs> you can stop right there, actually. Surely the point is that Bert is engaged in a mutually fulfilling, caring relationship, and it's absolutely out of order to talk like this in this day and age. You sound positively homophobic. I am not homophobic. Well, you absolutely need to be jolly careful what you say. Well, I am not homophobic. Well, good. <laughs> Ladders? Hacksaws? The thing is, the wife does the open university. It's a third year. Sewage and waterworks. <laughs> Don't mention waterworks. She has to watch all the programmes at four o'clock in the morning because she can't work the video. I can't really phone now. Well, can't you drive round and ask her, Bert? <sighs> Come on, Derwent. You're supposed to be on work experience. Meeting my wife, that's some sort of experience, I suppose. <laughs> You're young. You'll get over it. <laughs> How are you doing, Glenn? OK. Look, can you all just move down there? She doesn't want everybody goggling at her. Hey, darling, unexpected deal. Shall we pick up a couple of executives at the Midland Hotel and have an orgy? <laughs> we could do. I might just pop home and dip me nets. <laughs> what sort of girls do you like, then? Dark. Thanks a bog roll. You're a bit touchy, aren't you? Who rattled your scrotum? <laughs> Back again. Has anyone seen Stan? He's gone to get a hacksaw. Oh, has he? I'm being funny. <laughs> I'll just hang about. I'm tired of going past builders in this bra. <laughs> well, you don't seem too push this morning. Anyone want to come belly dancing? We've got a bit of a, oh, what's that word? Not unicorn, dilemma. Glenn stuck behind that ladder. She's desperate to go to the toilet, and the woman who owns the ladder can't come to the phone because she's doing third year sewage with the Open University. There's always someone worse off than yourself. <laughs> In my case, it's usually Jean. <laughs> and have you got bladder urgency? Oh, I know that feeling. We have relatives in Exeter, and my husband makes us drive non stop. Because he has an artificial leg and he likes to put it on the roof rack on a long journey. <laughs> Give it a blow through. <laughs> anyway, I've got a little gizmo from the Innovations catalogue. You just pop it in your pants and you run a drainage tube into the glove compartment. <laughs> you haven't got it here, have you? No. Look, Glenn, if you need a wee, have one. We'll get you a bucket. I need privacy. I'm wearing low-leg trouser briefs with tummy control. They're a beggar to get down. Are you really open? Apart from being shut for redecoration and having a 20-foot ladder jammed across the cooker, we're up and running, yeah? Can you not do toast? Hi, Betty. Nice bra. <laughs> get your brains on this, Jane. That ladder's stuck. Glenn's busting for a wee. She's got internal staples. She can't bend down. She can't climb over. She can't go in the cold storage room. She can't get down the fire escape. We don't know if we can axe the ladder. You're Glenn. What do you do? Wet myself, it's quicker. <laughs> it's unlocked, Betty, and there's your cassette player. Thanks, Stan. Uh, can you not lift her over? Tony, you and Stan between you could oik her up. No, I've just had an operation. No offence, Glenn. If I pick you up, I'd need a flipping operation. <laughs> you see, this is where belly dancing would come in. Hey, limbo dancing. Could you not limbo your way under? I don't know how. Have you never done it on holiday? No. We always go to Prestatin. <laughs> Where you lift people up on two fingers. I'm not lifting Glenn up with two fingers. <laughs> no, you do it with lots of people and you blindfold them and hit them on the head with a tin tray and they think it's the ceiling. Oh, we used to play it at parties. Most <laughs> parties, Cynthia Payne's. <laughs> Look, Glenn's in pain here. 
I can't see she's going to feel a whole lot better if we blindfold her and hit her over the head with a tin tray. We could grease a cardigan and pull her out by the ankles. Stan! <laughs> could you not roll her out on a few paint tins? Isn't that how the built stone ends? I'm sorry, I'm going to cry or wet my pants. I can't take it anymore. Look, let's change the subject. Where's everybody going for their holidays? Jean? Niagara Falls. Oh. <laughs> the honeymoon capital of the world. Mm, so why am I going with Keith? It's like taking Telus of Alice for a shampoo and set. <laughs> Tell you. Shampoo and what? Shampoo and some music on. Yes. Lordy, why don't I make a sort of toilet tent? I did do it once in the guides. What was that game where you lift people up? Bring a car. Catering then, Sigourney. It's all right. It's a bit boring. 